So we're here in on the west side of Maui, um, the Lahaina district. We're a little bit north of the town of Lahaina. And this is a great example of the kind of things that we tend to do to our coastal zone. In the case of Hawaii, this starts, uh, the, the Western Polynesian interactions really start in, in um, earnest in 1778, when Captain Cook first lands in what he calls the Sandwich Islands and starts this uh, interaction between West and Polynesia. Uh, they, uh, that initiates a trade for metal and guns and, and, and Western technology for things like, um, in particular, sandalwood. So sandalwood becomes a big thing. So at the time, if we look up to the hillsides here on the craters in, in Maui, we have koa, opihu, and sandalwood are the three major vegetation, uh, woody vegetation types that, that are dominating the slopes. And sandalwood is a is a type of wood that really is very uh, smelly, very fragrant, and maintains its fragrancy for a long time. It's a very desirous wood. So people wanted this sandalwood. Um, there's, there's several species, but so basically all kinds of sandalwood up here. So we start trading that primarily with Asia. And then through that Asian trade, um, through that Asian trade, uh, uh, the whalers, the Yankee traders, so the people out of New Bedford and, and that part of New England that had depleted all of the whales in, in our part, of, in the eastern part of the U.S. and by that point, early 1800s, had depleted all the whales in most of the Atlantic, figure out how to go around the Cape of Good Hope. They figure out how to go into the Pacific consistently, safely. They start doing that and they come to the South Pacific and they hear tales of these massive whales in Japan. They hear because of the sandalwood trade, because of the Hawaiian sandalwood trade. And so then they start attacking whales. And initially they're going after sperm whales, bowhead whales, all these uh, 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 oil rich whales, humpback whales, they don't care about. Humpbacks are lame. They don't produce much oil. When you tend to harpoon a, a uh, humpback, they tend to sink. And go down so humpbacks weren't particularly interesting so they got about a hundred year reprieve compared to other whales but meanwhile this whole time starting in the early eight, mid 1800s lots of foreigners are coming here lots of pirates lots of traders lots of whalers and so this whole area is a, a huge deal right it's a huge um international mixing pot with different cultures different different uh, 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 issues, different priorities, etc., And it's huge. The missionaries come in right behind them and they say, they say, oh my God, this is evil, this is bad, prostitutes, alcohol, all this bad stuff. They try to stomp, you know, stomp it down, doesn't really work. So Lahaina, the, the, the modern version of Lahaina that we know that was the, used to be the royal, royal retreat becomes this epicenter of international commerce. Lots of books, lots of teachings, lots of art, all that kind of stuff. And that goes crazy. All throughout the early 1800s. Even though there's humpback whales, which you might be able to see some off behind me here. Even though humpback whales are very, very common here um, uh, as they, as they uh, give birth, etc. in the winter to spring, people didn't harpoon them even though the whalers were coming on in. Once they deplete their stocks in the Antarctica and other places, and they're desperate for whales, then they start to, to attack these humpback whales here in the channel. Um, because so many whalers came here, it drew, it drew this area to the attention of the Americans, and the Americans came and basically took over this, you know, uh, 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 installed themselves uh, through a series of uh, horrible activities and kicked out the Hawaiian government and put in a uh, a puppet regime that quickly became an American regime, and they started doing all kinds of agriculture. So if we look over here, we can't see it because we have hotels in the way, but on the, the hill slopes over here, used to be all breadfruit, taro, um, um, uh, uh, that type of stuff. A very, very wet area here in Maui. And so that gets converted into um, industrial, what we would now call industrial agriculture. Espe pineapples, especially sugar. So all the sugar plantation is going on, and that goes for quite a long time. Um, that's going on, usurping all the local water rights and all that kind of stuff. And then World War II, 
World War II happens at the end of World War II. Now, the next people that figure this out in, in the wake of hearing about these other people that have been here are the development people. And so they start coming in and start to put in hotels. And so sailors that are here in World War II are stationed in, in uh, Pearl Harbor, places like that, think, oh my gosh, it's awesome to be here on the beach in, in, sunny, in sunny Hawaii. I like this place, so they want to stay here. So people realize this is maybe a vacation place. And so we start to see the first modern, sort of what we now call the modern hotel things start going in the wake of World War II, really get going in the 60s and 70s. And so eventually we get what we have here. So the native peoples that have something similar to us in California, which is everybody has access to the coast, to the beach, to the water. Here though, um, it's, it's the same in Hawaiian tradition. Here, um, these areas are usurped, right? So this property is taken over by Americans and by wealthy folks. And then in the wake of World War II, it's taken over by the hotel developers, etc. And so now what we have in this whole stretch, we're looking here and we're now north of the town of Lahaina. Pretty much, this is uh, 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 about a two mile, three mile stretch of hotels. It's Hotel One, into Hotel Two, into Hotel Three, into Hotel Four, et cetera. And while there is public access points here, we just walked out and up down a public access point. It's um, it's mostly tourists here, right? It's mostly tourists. This is this is not a beach for Hawaiians per se, even though we have a, a Hawaiian flag right here in protest. So we have the Hawaiian flag, Hawaiian state flag. It's flown upside down in protest of current practices here. Um, but even though we have this flag here, this is this is really not optimized for local Hawaiian use. This is optimized for foreigner tourist uh, use. And this whole economy has now been built and wrapped around tourism. So this beach, this system is what everybody wants to come hang out on. People want to come here from Wisconsin. They want to come here from Europe. They want to come here from wherever. Hang on this wonderful beach, beautiful palm trees, go snorkel, go see the warm water, all that kind of stuff, which is not a bad thing. But when you have miles and miles and miles of this that the native folks can't use, um, maybe that's not a good thing, right? Maybe, maybe we've given too much over to the uh, developers.